All right, good afternoon. We are going to get started. Um, it's nice to uh, have you joining us today. Uh, my name is Kurt Hessinger, and I'm one of the academic advisors for the School of Social Sciences here at UC Irvine. So again, welcome. Uh, congratulations on being admitted to UCI in the School of Social Sciences, and we're happy to have you uh, on board. We're happy to see you in the fall quarter. So a little bit about the session that we're going to be having today. We're going to be talking about our economics majors, so economics, business economics, and quantitative economics. And we're at the end of our session. We will have a live Q&A session to allow you to ask questions. And our academic advisors that will be here as well will actually answer those questions for you live, verbally. Um, but we do ask that you wait until the end of the presentation to kind of put your questions in the Q&A box, uh, since we want to make sure you have all the information. Uh, some of the answers to your questions will be embedded in the presentation. So <clears throat> we're going to get started. All right, so a little bit of the topics we're going to be covering here in the next um, you know, half an hour, 35 minutes. Um, we are, we're going to have um, Carissa Sorensen from our Social Sciences Academic Resource Center speak a little bit about the opportunities available for undergraduate students in our resource center, which is amazing. Uh, after that, we'll be going through the graduation requirements that you need, that you need to get to, from point A to point B here at UCI. We'll be talking a little bit about some of the school social science requirements and how that factors into your major. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the econ department in general and what it's all about and some of the opportunities available to students. Then we'll go into a little bit more depth about the major requirements for each of the econ majors that we have. And then talking about minors and electives in case that's something that you're interested in pursuing. Then we'll talk about how to change your major if you're interested in changing your major and also how to potentially double major if that's something you want to do as well. And then we'll talk a little bit about our office as undergraduate student affairs and how we can help you in your journey here at UCI. And then a little bit of some resources that can be beneficial to you. And then some kind of important dates and deadlines that are coming up. And then we'll have our, our live Q&A session. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Carissa. And she's going to be talking a little bit more about our Social Sciences Academic Resource Center, SARC for short. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris. It's all yours. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kurt. And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carissa Sorensen, and I'm the director of the Social Sciences Academic Resource Center, which we fondly refer to as SARC. Um, I'm really excited to be with you virtually today just to share a little bit more about our center and how we can provide you the various resources to set you up for long-term success um, after graduating from UCI. Um, so just a little bit about us. Um, SARC is committed to supporting um, you in the pursuit of your post-baccalaureate goals. So this just means your goals um, after UCI. Um, so whether that's graduate school, full-time employment, or research, um, we kind of got it all. And we're actually very unique to the School of Social Sciences. So there's no other academic unit like our center. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, besides myself, we also have a program coordinator. His name's Patrick Del Rosario. So hopefully you'll get to meet him someday, virtually or in person. Um, we also have graduate students that work for our center too. So these are actual PhD students in the School of Social Sciences that can provide us assistance with graduate school. We also have our peer consultants. So these are students just like you um, that can also provide a wealth of information as well. Um, but for example, our team can certainly provide you assistance with like the graduate school application process or like looking over your personal statements or statement of purpose, um, as well as connecting you to various scholarships. So these include scholarships here within the School of Social Sciences or just on-campus scholarships and off-campus scholarships and fellowships. Um, as well as internships, career positions, perhaps you're interested in learning more about research and just getting faculty mentored research under your belt, we can also connect you with that. Um, or perhaps you're maybe looking into just getting involved. Um, we have a variety of campus leadership and service opportunities in the school too and beyond, um, so we can certainly get you connected. We also strongly encourage you to utilize our one-on-one -on -one consultations. Um, we can have your resume cover letter reviewed, um, and hopefully when you're in person or when we all get back to being in person, uh, you'll be also be able to use our study space. Um, we also have computers available and printing services, and our physical location is actually located in SBSG, so kind of one of the main campus buildings in the School of Social Sciences. But for now, you can actually contact us virtually um, by email. Um, we're open this summer, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. virtually. Um, and if you are also on social media, uh, we also encourage you to follow us on Instagram or Facebook. You can follow us at UC Irvine Sark. Um, but that's it for now. I'll go ahead and pass it back to Kurt. Thank you so much. 
All right, thank you, Carissa. Um, can't say enough about how great the Social Science Academic Resource Center is. And um, when you come on campus in the fall, it's gonna be a great uh, office for you to kind of just view and hang out and you'll see uh, firsthand what type of information and the great opportunities that they can provide as well. So thank you again, Carissa. All right, so <clears throat> one of the first things we wanna talk about <clears throat> is basically how to graduate. What do you need to do just to graduate from UCI? So first things first is that under the School of Social Sciences, we do have a set of math courses and major courses that out every student has to take. The key with that is all of these courses must be taken for a letter grade. So that's something that you definitely want to focus on as you're enrolling in classes is to make sure that you do enroll in those courses related to math and major for a letter grade option only. Okay, so very important. The other part of it is every student, regardless of major, also has to complete at least 180 quarter units. So what that means basically is that no matter if you're an econ major or a history major or a criminology major, every student to graduate from UCI has to have at least 180 quarter units before they can graduate. So what that might happen is, let's say you are an econ major and you've completed all of your economics major requirements, but you find that you might have, I don't know, about 12 units left to reach the 180 units. If that's the case, then you need to take other courses to reach that 180 units. And that could be courses within your major, it could be courses outside, like elective courses in different areas as long as you meet minimally the 180 units, right? You can go above 180 if you like, but you at least have to have 180 units to graduate exactly, okay? And then also there's a limit on how many transfer units can be uh, you know, accepted by UCI, and that's 105 quarter units. If you're coming from a semester school college, that's a, that equates to about 70 semester units. And so that's something to keep in mind as well, that once you re reach that 70 course limit, 70 unit limit, that's the maximum amount of units that you can transfer over. This, it doesn't include advanced placement or international baccalaureate exams, so that's also to be included. That's not part of that, but 105 is the maximum transferability of courses from another college. And then lastly, every student has to have a 2.0 minimum GPA overall in, and in their major. So we know you have aspirations a lot higher than that, but we do want to present that to you as the minimum. At least you have to have that or to receive a degree from UCI. All right, the next few slides, we're gonna be talking about four different areas. Um, the first are what we call UC requirements. And UC requirements are basically the same for all campuses. So whether it's Irvine, UCLA, Davis, all the same UC requirements. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll talk more specifically about UCI general education courses and how that factors into your degree. Then we'll talk about School of Social Sciences requirements and then major requirements specific to your majors in economics. All right, so the first requirement for UC requirement is what we call UC entry level writing. And nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10, this is automatically gonna be satisfied by incoming transfer students because as long as you've taken a transferable English composition course, then this is already satisfied. So I think most of you should be okay with this uh, re requirement. Now the next one, American History and Institutions, uh, you may have this requirement satisfied, either part, part of it or all of it, or you might not have any of it. It just really depends on the courses you've taken from your previous college. Uh, so what that means is basically all students have, to have at least one course in American history and one course in American government. So, uh, so you may have taken both of those at your previous college. And if you've done that, great. It'll be certified by UCI admissions and looked at and evaluated later. So we won't have that data like right now. But as we get closer to the fall quarter, we should know for sure like, where you stand in those two areas. But the key thing to know is that it is a requirement to graduate. So if you do still need to take these classes at UCI, then you can either take a, a year-long sequence in U.S. history, which is history 40A, B, and C, or you can take a, a course in U.S. history and then a course in U.S. government, which is poli sci 21A, and then you need to get C's or better in all those classes. So there are ways to satisfy that requirement here at UCI as well if you need to do that. All right, so UCI general education requirements. So at UCI, there's eight specific categories dedicated to general education. Uh, the first one is writing. So there's three courses total in the writing area. Um, there's two lower division writing courses, and there's also an upper division writing course that every student has to complete. Then we have science and technology, which is three courses total there. And those are courses like chemistry, physics, bio sci, earth system science, courses of that uh, area. Then we have category three, social and behavioral sciences, and that's three courses as well. But the good thing about this category is that if you stay as a major within the School of Social Sciences, 
this is automatically satisfied. So you wouldn't have to worry about it as long as you keep with your major here in social sciences. Then we have category four, which is arts and humanities. And that's also three classes. Uh, those would be courses like African-American studies, philosophy, art history, uh, history. Uh, those are some sample courses that you might see in this category. Then you have category five, which is quantitative literacy and formal reasoning. Uh, this category is actually covered by the School of Social Sciences math requirement that we'll be talking about a little bit later. So that will be satisfied through that. Then we have category six, which is language other than English. And at UCI, students have to complete through the one C level of a language here at UC Irvine. And so that you may have already satisfied this either in high school, if you had three years of the same language in high school, you might have satisfied it with some courses from your previous college if you had two semesters of the same language. But that is something that we will have to evaluate later based off your transcripts. And then we have multicultural studies, and that's one course in that area. And these are courses that are related to uh, race and ethnic studies courses. So courses like Asian American studies, African American studies. Uh, there might be courses in other areas and other disciplines as well, but those are some sample courses there. Then we have category A, which is international global issues. That's one course as well. And those would be courses that focus on more global issues. So like say, history of China or Canadian politics, courses of that nature that might be more general outside of the US. So those are the eight categories for general education. Now for transfer students, many of you are, if you're coming from a California community college, maybe you work, are working through these requirements through UCI Getsy. Um, we're gonna talk more about that in the next slide, but there is a possibility that most of these requirements could be satisfied through uh, an official UCI Getsy certification. Also, if you're coming from another UC, so if you're transferring directly from another UC like UC Riverside, UCLA, Berkeley, then there, are all, there is something called UC reciprocity. And that is basically a letter that's written from your UC home campus that says, oh, you've you satisfied the general educations at that campus. And then we can also accept that as well here at UCI. All right, so a little bit more about IGETC and UC reciprocity. So IGETC certification is a community college official certification. So it's not something that's required by the UC system. It's not something that's produced by the UC system. So it is something that has to come directly from your home community college that's certifying your transcript. So the key is it's not automatically done for every student on the transcript. So in many cases, you have to officially request an IGETC separate from just saying, I want my transcript sent to UCI admissions, right? You might have to do a checkbox on your request and sometimes it's on the transcript. It says it if you've done it, or it's on a separate certification that's attached to the transcript when it's sent to UCI admission. So the key thing is here is double check with the community college. If you know you have UCI gets the certification, just make sure your college is sending that to UCI admissions along with your transcripts. Because that's really the only way we can certify you for the IGETC is by seeing that with UCI admission. All right, and then UC reciprocity is the same thing. If you know you have that completed, then you want to contact your home UC campus, have them have that letter officially sent to UCI admissions electronically as well. And then that way we can certify that if it's if you have that done. Okay. Now, if you have the full partial IGETC, UCI IGETC, or letter of reciprocity, make sure it is sent electronically to UCI admissions. It can't be an unofficial certification, but it has to go directly to UCI admissions for us to be able to accept that. Okay. And then for Transfer students, if you have IGETC or reciprocity, every student has to do at least one upper division writing course regardless. So make sure that you factor that into your courses and that'll be on a degree check sheet that you'll get later in the summer. So you'll see that as an option on there, but every student has to do one upper division writing class with a UCI and that's typically designated with a W after it. So you'll see that in the courses in the, in the catalog later. All right, so School of Social Sciences requirements. So within the School of Social Sciences, everyone has to take at least a year of math, depending on the majors, such as econ, busy econ, and quantitative econ, there is more extensive math involved with those majors. So those are satisfied through courses like Math 2A and 2B, Econ 15A and 15B, which is Econ Probability and Statistics, and then 122A, which is more advanced that's, uh, stats and economics. So that's if you're an econ or busy econ major. For quantitative economics, then it's satisfied through Math 2A, 2B, which is calculus, Math 3A, which is considered linear algebra, and then either stats 120A, B, and C, or Math 130A, B, and C, which is more of an upper division level stats series. And then all of these courses must be taken for a letter grade as well. 
And then the second category that we have, the computer technology requirement, is a one course commitment. And most students tend to take the social science 3A class because it is something that's developed within the School of Social Sciences and it focuses on more social science related computer technology topics. But there is an option of ICS 31 as well, which is a computer science programming course. It is a little bit more challenging to get into because it is reserved a lot of times for our computer science majors here at UCI. But that is another option as well if you don't want to do the social science 3A or you want to have another choice, right? And this requirement can be taken for a pass and pass or for a letter grade for the computer technology. All right, so a little bit about our Department of Economics. Um, so economics in general focuses a lot more on theoretical principles. So you're going to see a lot of theory, a lot of more quantitative analysis in all of our economics majors. So it's definitely not a business degree. It does focus more on making choices, microeconomics and public choice and macroeconomics as far as, you know, aggregate consequences of choices. So it really focuses more on the theoretical principles behind economics with a lot more of the, the quantitative analysis and math involved with it as well. So you're going to see some of the sample courses on the left hand side, and that just gives you a little bit of a taste of what you might be taking within our majors in economics. So international money, international trade, money and banking, uh, corporate finance are just a few of the courses that you might be seeing along the way in our majors in economics. And then we do have some opportunities such as an honors program. So if you're interested in engaging in research within any of our econ majors, there is an honors program where you can actually do your own thesis, which is a big research project. And you'll have a faculty mentor that you work with and it's a year long project. So that's something you might want to consider if you want to go into more depth with research within your major. Right? And then we have a specialization in the international issues and economics. And then we also have an economics learning center as well, that's uh, it's great for extra you know, tutoring or background information in some of our economics courses. So we do have that as, a, as an available resource as well. All right, so now in the next three slides, I'm gonna go through the each specific economics major and show you what the courses are. So the first one that we see right here is economics. And so economics is basically the most general major that we have in economics. Um, there's, there are a lot of similarities between econ and business econ, which I'll go through in a second. But if you're doing economics, right, and the, and the, you see the sample degree check right over here on the right-hand side, this is a degree check that you would get if you're an economics major. And then you would see the courses kind of lined out this way. It's more of a visual aid right there. But on the left-hand side kind of outlines the actual requirements within the major. So every student has to have two social sciences intro courses, which you see in item 10 right over here. And then those options that you have are listed right here, like anthro courses, psych courses, sociology courses, et cetera. And then every student has to have micro and uh, intro to microeconomics, intro to macroeconomics, which is Econ 20A and 20B here at UCI. And that's these two courses in number 11. Every student has to have at least two courses in calculus, which at UCI is map 2A and 2B. And that's listed right here in number item 12, these two areas. Then every student has to have Econ 15A and 15B, which is Econ Probability and Statistics, and that's represented here in number 13. And then every student has to have one Applied Economics course uh, in stats, and that's Econ 122A, and that's listed right here, Applied Econometrics. And then three Intermediate Economics courses are required, which is in sequence, one, two, and three here in number 15. And then on the right-hand side over here in number 16, there are six e Economic Elective courses. And Five of those have to be upper division. One of those can be a lower division class as well. So this is for our economics major requirement. Now, if you're coming in as an econ major, you might've satisfied some of these requirements from your previous college. If that's the case, then you would see some of these courses already being filled in, right? Like if you've done some intro classes or if you've done some calculus, you would see some of those checked off there. So this is blank right now, but that's only because we're trying to show you what a, the outline of the, the entire major looks like. All right, and so our second major is business economics, and you'll see this very similar degree check on the right hand side, which is right over here. And what really separates business econ from econ is econ is a little bit more specific in its requirements. Also, the business economics major does include one course in accounting, which is econ 25, and that's represented over here in number 12. There's also one additional class required in applied economics courses like econometrics. So in, you get to take 122A and 122B for business economics, and that's represented in number 15 down here. And then for your, there's also two business economics electives and two management economic 
elective courses that are required as well, which is number 17 and 18 over here. These are still econ courses. They're just more specific in your choices. So we actually tell you what courses you can choose from in, from each of those categories, but they are economic schools, same as economics majors. All right. And then we have three additional economics courses right down here. And those can be just general elective courses that you haven't taken already within the major. And then our last major in economics would be quantitative economics. Okay. So you see right here that this major varies a lot more between business economics and economics. So there's, there's a few more changes in requirements here. So everything is the same as far as intro courses, micro, macro, and then calculus 2A and 2B. But our quantitative economics major does require linear algebra. And that's a requirement right here in number 12. We also require stats, probability and stats, but an upper division stats course. So students have to complete either stats 120A, B, and C, or math 130A, B, and C. And that's represented in number 13 in this box down here. And so all students also must take econometrics for quantitative as well, but it is a separate numbered course. For quantitative economics majors, it's 123 A and B. So that would be a requirement that would be right here in number 15. And then there also is an intermediate quantitative economic sequence that students must take as well. And that's 105 A, B, and C, which is represented in number 14 right up here. And then up top here, you'll see number 16 that there's also two quantitative econ electives required. And there's some choices of courses that are listed here. And then there's additional two economic elective courses in this area, and those can be other general upper division econ courses. And then the other aspect of it that's a little bit different is that students must take an economics upper division writing course within the major of economics. So that would be a course such as like Econ 137W, courses like that, but it has to be an econ upper division writing course. All right, so that kind of gives you an overview of the three different majors we have in economics. Now, you might decide along the way that you also want to add a minor while you're here at UCI. And if that's the case, then great. Um, minors are a great way to kind of explore other areas if you have the time. Um, it's not something that's required, so you don't have to do a minor in order to graduate. But it is something like about seven or more courses, depending on the minor, that you would take beyond what you're doing within your major. And if you're interested in doing that, that's something you can ask us about maybe during the beginning of the academic year or sometime during the academic year that we can provide you with more information regarding what types of minors you might want to consider. The other aspect is, is that if you do need extra units, like I mentioned earlier for the 180 units, you could do elective units too. And that means like those are courses that, you know, that would meet the 180 unit requirement. And if you've already met your major requirements then these classes can be any courses outside the area, that's what we refer to as elective units, courses that you need to just for units to get up to the 180 unit level. All right, so changing your major or double major. So we, uh, I realize that some of you may be looking to change your major into economics, business economics or quantitative economics. And so for, for students who are trying to change into the major, there are certain requirements that have to be met specifically first, like micro and macroeconomics, calculus, math 2A and 2B, um, and with certain GPAs in those areas. So it's definitely important if you're considering econ, business econ, or quantitative econ as your major choice as a transfer student, that you meet these requirements as soon as possible in order to continue to make progress and trying to complete the major in a timely fashion. To find out the requirements to get into the majors at UCI, there's a, there's a uh, change of major website called changeofmajor.uci.edu. And if you click on that link, not only can you see the change of major requirements for our econ majors, you can also see other uh, school-wide majors as well on how to change your majors and what courses might be needed to get in there. Um, every major, if you're changing or double majoring, does require a subset of courses that you'd have to complete. So you, you would need to plan ahead, right? Because if you need to take like say four or five courses, plus get a certain GPA requirement, all of those requirements would have to be met first before you'd be able to even be considered for a change of major or a double major here at UCI. Right? And then there is a maximum unit limit as well. So keep in mind that you don't want to wait too long to start making progress in these areas because you're only given a maximum of nine quarters as a transfer student to complete all of your uh, degree requirements here at UCI, which is basically three years as nine quarters. So keep that in mind as you're taking your classes and making progress that you do want to make sure you're aware of the time frame for completing your degree requirements. Right? And then the other thing to realize too is that if you're not coming in as an economics major, 
that are are the all the major courses in economics are major restricted for economics majors right now until August 26 by noon. So what that means is if you're not yet an econ or a business econ major and you're still trying to make your way to that area, you're, you're going to have to wait until later in August, August 26, to see what courses might be available to you at that time. And then lastly with that is if you're changing major, if you did fill out the registration form and you indicated that, oh, I want to do econ or business econ on that form, one of our academic advisors will contact you regarding the options and what you need to do to get into the major and what still needs to be met to get there. All right, so this is our undergraduate student affairs office. I always, it's a smile on my face to see this photo because we're a fun office, you know? Some might say we're, you know, an unusual weird fun office and I think that all applies, but we're all here to help you. Um, we have eight full-time academic advisors the great thing is, is that we're all UCI alumni, right? We've all gotten our degrees from UCI at different points in time. So we all know the campus backwards and forwards, which is great. But even better than that is that we have eight to 12 peer academic advisors who are trained um, by, by our office and by one of our advisors, Estella. And she does an amazing job with these peer advisors and getting them trained in all the majors that we have, including economics and business economics. And we have, they, they represent current students what's going on right now on campus that's why they're as a resource they're even better than we are because they can tell you what's going on currently right now at uci and how they plan their schedules out and what they're doing on campus and things like that so you have the opportunity to have multiple people that get advice from here in the student affairs office um, we also see some of our other services down there that we'll provide you as well and our email address is at the top as well as our website and then our location is actually our physical building location on campus when we come in the fall, so you know where that building is at. All right, so communicating with our office. So two important ways to communicate. One is through the summer, right, which is basically now, between now and the end of September. So since you say on the quarter system, we don't start our quarter until the end of September. So there's a little bit of time in between there. So any questions that you have between now and the end of September, you would actually send us an email at our transfer admin email, and you probably already received emails from us from that email address or you reply to some emails to that email address. So any questions you have during the summer, send it to transfer admin at socsci.uci.edu. And then make sure you use your UCI email address because I think all you have activated now. So please use that address so we know who we're talking to. Also include your full name, your UCI ID number in the email, and then give us at least two days, business days to respond because we do have a lot of new students coming in in the fall. And it may take us a couple of days to get back to all of the emails, right? So that's for the summer. That's your way to communicate with our office during the summer, all right? Now, once the fall quarter begins at the end of September, then you have some other ways you can get a hold of us, right? You can either send an email to one specific advisor in our office. So we have eight advisors. You can choose one of us to send an email to. And we do emphasize one because we don't want you to be sending an email to each advisor because it takes more time to kind of reply to emails that way. So pick one advisor if you like. And then also you can send it to our general email account, which is socsci at uci.edu. That's another way you can communicate with our office as well. The other way you can get a hold of us at the beginning of the fall quarter is via phone. So we will have phone hours posted on our website once the fall quarter begins. And so you'll be able to see when we're available via phone. And then if you call outside of our posted phone hours, just make sure to leave a voicemail with your full name and UCI ID number and call back. And then we'll return your call the next time we're are, we're available. We also have a live chat, which is really nice. Uh, the live chat is basically for quick questions. So if you have you know, questions that can be easily answered through a couple you know, minutes of quick questions, and that would be a good option for you. It's not designed for really appointments or you know, schedule planning because it is for quick questions. So that's there for you. And then beginning week two of each quarter, we will have Zoom appointments available as well. And you can submit your appointment request form on our website once the week two starts for each quarter, week two to the week end of each quarter, right? But for the summer, from now until the end of uh, September, please use our transfer admin uh, email address to communicate with our office. So thank you for that. All right, so some of our resources that you see here, um, you have a lot of resources available to you at UCI. This is just a few of them, but we do encourage you to reach out, whether it's to us or those offices uh, directly. Uh, there's the Learning and Academic Resource Center, the Counseling Center, Career Pathways, the International Center, 
the Dream Center, all of these offices have very specific functions on campus and can provide great information depending on what you're looking for. So take a look at these offices on campus and you see, you see a handful of them right here, but we're have dedicated staff here at UCA that want to help undergraduate students and want to see you succeed. And so that's why it's good that you can use us and also uh, supplement it with all the other UCA resources that we have as well. All right, so what's coming up next? So some important deadlines to remember, right? If you haven't done so already, make sure you register for transfer advising for social sciences by June 18th at 5 p.m. Very important because that gets you to the next step, which is completing your Canvas modules that'll be sent to your UCI email address. And that has to be done by June 24th, all right? So those are two very important dates right there. Um, so students who have completed their Canvas modules by June 24th, you'll have your registrations hold lifted between June 28th and July 8th. And that way you can start the enrollment process for fall quarter. And during that time frame, you're gonna be receiving an email uh, from one of our academic advisors with all of your course suggestions. You're gonna get a copy of a degree check that shows your progress within the majors you know, that you're in. And we'll have some recommendations on courses as well and explain the whole enrollment process. But you can't get to that point unless you register for transfer advising by June 18th, and then you have to get invited to complete your Canvas modules by June 24th. So make sure that gets done because it's very important to get enrolling classes for the fall quarter. And then when the hold is lifted and you get that email, enroll those classes as soon as you can because courses do fill up quickly and we don't want you to miss out on any important classes that you need to make progress within your major. And then two other important deadlines, which are more admission deadlines. July 1st, submit all of your official transcripts to UCI admissions electronically by July 1st. Very important deadline because you, there may be a hold placed on your record after that time if, the, if everything's not in. So make sure you communicate with your application portal, your admissions portal, make sure that all those transfers are getting sent in by July 1st. And then fee payment for fall quarter, very important. Make sure you pay your fees by September 15th at, by 4 p.m. Because if you don't pay your fall quarter fees by that date, then you would get dropped from all of your classes. And then there's no guarantees that you'd be able to add back into those courses later if they're full. All right, so that kind of concludes the presentation part of our webinar. So what we're going to be doing now is, like I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to have a live Q&A uh, session with our other, some other advisors available as well. And so what we want you to do is actually to enter, enter your questions in the chat box, which is listed there in the webinar. And you can actually put your questions there, and we're going to answer most of them verbally. And then, advance, uh, and then we're also going to be very general in these questions. So make sure you don't actually put a question in there that's not that's related to you specifically because we can't really talk about that because it's more confidential. So keep the questions general, all right? And then make sure you, you send your question only once. So that's key so we can sift through all the questions that you may have throughout the process. So we're gonna get started. We'll kind of monitor the Q&A chat box to see what questions are there and then we'll go from there. So if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. Um, otherwise, if no one has any questions, we'll probably end the session shortly. Yeah, this is definitely your time because you have three academic advisors here within social sciences that can answer your questions right now, you know, live. So if anything's on the tip of your tongue, any questions about anything you have related to your major that's more general, definitely. And so we're, we're all here ready to help you out.
Okay, uh, so we have a couple questions. So um, first of all, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm one of the academic advisors in the School of Social Sciences um, and I'm moderating the Q&A. So I'm the person reading your questions. Um, so Lee is asking, when and how do I apply to change my major? Uh, they are political science and they want to be business econ. Okay, I'll take this question. Um, hi everyone, my name is Lisha. I'm one of the advisors from Social Sciences. Um, so basically, once when you fill out the registration form for the transfer advising, um, just make sure you indicate in the form that you're trying to change your major. And then you know, when you uh, get an uh, email from us later, uh, we'll let you know in terms of uh, what your progress in the change of major uh, requirements, what you still need to take and when, uh, what are the steps to take to declare the major. So we'll see if you have taken any of the change of major required classes, um, like macro, uh, macro, micro, econ, and calculus one and two. Um, you have taken those at community college or not. We'll let you know if you still need to take any of those classes at UCI, and then when you can submit the requ uh, the request change on the, your student access to declare the major. But it's best for you to take the classes as soon as possible so that you can gain access to the major restricted courses. But uh, I would say the earliest you can change, um, depending on your progress right now, would be at the end of fall quarter. Yeah, so just let us know when you fill out the registration form that you want to change your major, and we'll let you know uh, in terms of your progress later on. Um, and Lee, if you've already filled out the registration form, but you didn't indicate that you wanted to change to Business Econ, um, you can always send an email to that transfer admit at socci.uci.edu email address um, and let me know. Um, and then we will update your registration to show that you are interested in changing to Business Econ so we can send you the appropriate information for your fall classes. Okay, so Lily is asking if we can repeat the information about registration and when you need to register. Um, okay, so this is a me question. Um, so as far as transfer advising registration is concerned, um, you should have received an email from our office um, sometime either in May or in early June um, that was sent to your uh, the email address, the personal email address that you used when you filled out your UC application. Um, that had information and a link to a Google form of how to register for transfer advising. Um, so you would need to look for that email. Um, and please also check your junk mail and your spam because sometimes the emails end up going there. Um, and you would need to fill out that Google form and upload your unofficial transcripts before June 18th. Um, if for whatever reason you can't find this email, um, then again, email that transfer admin email address um, and let us know and we will resend the email to you so that you can uh, fill out that Google form so that you can register and then get access to the Canvas advising modules um, this month. Uh, okay, so Jane is asking, are there any ways to increase my chances of being declared into business economics major? So there is no specific, I mean, everyone has to meet the same requirements to get in. So there's no, you know, there's no limit on how many we can accept is if you meet the change in major requirements. The one thing is, is that you do have to meet all of the change in major requirements, GPA courses and everything else. Um, time frame also factors into it. So depending how long it takes you to get to meet the requirements to get in there and how much time you have to graduate, that also factors into the decision, but there's no way of increasing your chances other than trying to get the requirements completed as soon as possible. Um, and I'll go ahead and put that transfer admin email address in the chat so that um, everyone can like copy and paste it if they need it also. Um, so that email address, like Kurt said, is good for all your questions during the summer. Um, but definitely if you're having issues with the registration or can't find the email or anything like that, or you need to update us on some new information, just send an email to that email address. I don't see any other questions right now.
So I would say um, then since this is a pretty small, oh, hang on. <laughs> okay, another question from Jane. So I've taken a couple of calculus courses, but I'm not too confident in my current grades. Would you recommend that I retake them at community college or take them at UCI? I guess I'll take the question. Um, so it really depends on what your grade is. Um, so for the change of major requirements, we required um, the calculus to be completed at least uh, C or higher. And also your overall GPA for the four change of major required classes needs to be 2.5 or higher. So depending on what your grade is, you may or may not be eligible to repeat the course. Um, so when you're contacted for your um, enrollment information, you can let us know what grade you get and then we'll further advise you whether you need to retake the course or not at that point. Thanks, Alicia. Um, okay, another question from Lee. If I'm not in the major yet, is it easy to add the required classes to change to the econ major? All right, so that was kind of a question we addressed a little bit earlier in the presentation. Um, it depends on what you're missing, right, to get in those classes. If you're missing economics courses, then we do have major restrictions on our economics courses for econ majors only until August 26th by noon. At that point, the restrictions get lifted, and then if there's spaces in those courses, and if you do meet the prerequisites to get into those classes, then you'd have the opportunity to enroll at that time, but you would have to wait until that time period for fall quarter to enroll in those classes. Um, there is opportunities in summer to take some of the classes because there, there are no major restrictions in the summer here at UCI. So if you're missing a course or, and you want to do that during the summer, that might be an opportunity for you to get a class to, to play catch up a little bit or actually get on track. Um, if you need math courses, uh, for like, for example, like if you need both calculus courses, then you'd want to take probably a calculus placement exam via our UCI testing center to see if you placed into math two way if you haven't taken any calculus. That would be something you'd want to do right away if you know you need both courses in calculus. Um, if you've done a transferable equivalent to Math 2A, the first part of calculus, then you could be cleared for the second part of calculus, which is Math 2B. And that course you might be able to get into depending on what the sections are and how many spaces are left in that. So that's kind of a long, long winded answer to answer your questions about like what courses you make. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, another question. So uh, Jane is asking, I plan on continuing for my master's um, between uh, economics, business economics, and quantitative economics, which major would be the best to declare to help me get into grad school? I'll take this one. <laughs> okay, so basically all three are econ majors. Um, but the difference is that econ is more uh, like a, in a broader sense, um, but and then business econ is has a more of a business orientation to it, and quantitative econ has more of a math focus to the major. Um, so all three majors are sufficient um, for applying to like the same graduate programs if you want. Um, so I would say just pick the one that are more in line with your interests. Um, yeah, I would say for graduate school, it's probably more important um, to think about getting involved in research with uh, faculty in the economics department too, no matter which major you choose. Um, and kind of having those types of hands-on opportunities um, tends to make your graduate school application look even better. And of course, maintaining a high GPA as well is also very helpful um, as far as grad school is concerned. Um, especially as transfer students. If you remember Carissa from earlier in um, the presentation and talking about the SARC, um, the SARC and their advisors are really all about helping students um, on their path to graduate school. So especially for transfer students, I would say um, try and set up a time to talk to the SARC advisors as soon as you can, because they're gonna give you lots of good information on um, how you can get involved and what kind of avenues to pursue to make sure that your academic resume looks really good and that you're well prepared to apply to graduate school. Yeah, and then kind of just to add on to that too, now, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about going in something outside of the field of economics, like maybe you want to get an MBA or another area. So in that, in that sense, if it's not related necessarily to economics, it wouldn't matter also what major you had between those three. 
we do have a lot of students who go to MBA programs to be economics majors and major is not as important as doing well in the courses that you're enrolling for your major and taking certain exams that are necessary and that are the recommendation. So um, that's the other side of it too, depending on what type of master's program you're looking to get into. All right, um, if you have any other questions, now is the time to ask. We'll give it a minute and then we'll wrap up. Okay, um, so I don't see any other questions coming through. So then um, we will go ahead and end our session for today. Um, as we said before, if you think of any other questions that you have um, after today, then please send an email to that transfer admin at sockfi.uci.edu email address, uh, and we will answer your questions for you via email. Um, if you haven't, please fill out that registration form. Um, and let us know if you can't find the email, we'll resend it to you. Um, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you being here. Um, yeah, Kurt, did you want to say anything? No, no, not that. I mean, just you, yeah, just <laughs> okay. you know, look, looking forward, exciting to for fall quarter, just yeah, like you yeah. are, I'm sure. Yeah, so looking forward to yeah. seeing you. And za, 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 you'll learn that pretty soon, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we will see you all in the fall. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.